going on everybody? Sean Daniel from GuitarControl.com here. And you're probably thinking, oh great, another Johnny B. Good lesson. What's different about this? Well, we are going to learn the song, but on top of that, we're going to talk about some of the techniques that made Chuck Berry one of the blues players with the most personality of all time, just little things that he did. So make sure to uh, click the link in the description to get the tabs. And we're going to get right into it. We're going to do the intro. We're going to do the shuffle and a little bit of like the chorus uh, riffs and licks and stuff like that too, right? So basically we're going to start off like this. Okay, one of the most recognizable intros in the history of rock blues music. And it all starts by getting that middle finger and sliding from six to seven on the G string. Right, and it's real quick burst slide. And these little bursts, these kind of micro slides are really important to getting that kind of that signature sound, right? So we're anchoring the middle finger and the middle finger is kind of taking the lead and the other fingers are gonna kind of gather around it, right? So just by getting your middle finger onto that note, your pointer finger and your ring finger are gonna be in position on the B string. So we've got slide from six to seven G. Right there, just like that, okay? So seven, six, eight. And now you might feel uh, maybe like a desire to hammer on that second one, but part of his sound is really getting these, these down stroke picks, even these little bursts, right? So slide. And then we've got these kind of double stops, right? So after this little three note thing, we're going from a bar chord type deal where we're doing a blues double stop, barring the B and E string, and going from five to six. And we're doing bursts of three. This kind of three note thing is very important. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay? So we got slide. And that kind of lines us up right here. Alright, so this is gonna get, if you think of like a one finger per fret deal, it's really important to use the, the right fingers on this one. After we slide into this last time, we get your pinky on the B string, ring, index, kind of going backwards through the scale. Up a string, and when you go to the G string, now we've got your pointer finger to your middle finger, and this is that blue note that we kind of, that gives it that sound, right? So we've got. And then from here we're gonna jump. Now a lot of people play this as just like a bar chord, like. But we're gonna do it like this. So we're taking kind of like what we think of as like a B flat or A major bar chord, but we're just taking the eighth fret of the A and the D string, and we're heavily palm muting it to kind of get a lot of that energy. You're kind of going on like a dynamic ride. You start hard and then bring it down and bring it back up, okay? So we're gonna go through all of this again. And uh, again, we're starting with your middle finger. The middle finger is really important because it's kind of like the root of everything. Into the slides, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, backwards through the scale, up a string, into this kind of couple right here. So, we're gonna jump from this kind of palm muted thing, and if you don't know what palm muting is, you just take the side, karate chop the bridge, and instead of playing like open, it's, all right. So, and then we're gonna jump back into this spot, same spot where we started, but we're gonna do more of a double stop thing, where we hit this note first, and then we're gonna put your pointer finger on the sixth fret of the B string, and I'm gonna kind of exaggerate just so you can kind of see where it is. The melody is gonna be 7G, 6B, 8B. But after that first note, we're gonna get them both. All right, now you wanna be careful. You, you, you probably don't wanna get the high E string involved here. It's a little too much going on, and he's like known for these real kind of like staccato type bursty things. So what I'm doing, I'm actually taking my finger and I'm kind of holding the E string when I don't wanna hear it. That way I don't get up, right? And then after that, you just walk it back down through the scale all on the G string. So double stop back, seven, 
five, three, open. All right? And then after that, we get into what I think is the most Chuck Berry thing of all time. But here, one more time, super slow on the intro. into the personality part which is really kind of like a huge part of his playing eh? and it's gonna sound like this All right and now this is kind of to me when I hear like a lot of people play it this is the part that is all over the board right and I think what really gives him his style is this is like a, a pretty autobiographical song of his growing up in like a, like poor st. Louis and wanted to be like a like a blues player, and uh, he wrote, you know, he wrote this in like the 50s, and there's like a lot of angst in like a young Chuck Berry, and he's kind of like identifying. There's so much personality in the way he goes. All he's doing is just two notes, and he's almost kind of bending one note to the same note. So just to kind of show you the notes, he's got this, the eighth fret of the G string that he's bending up, and kind of choking at the top, and then hitting the sixth fret of the B string, which this is, this note right here is an F. And now if you were to bend the eighth fret of the G string all the way up, a whole step, that's being bent to an F. Right? But, so if you think about it, he's just playing a bunch of Fs. But so much of this kind of like angst that he has is are these little micro bends that aren't totally in tune. He's kind of getting it up, stopping it, and then hitting the, the next one. Right? And he's not getting a lot of unison. So it's really easy to kind of tell the difference between uh, when you're getting a little too much uh, of both strings. Like it might sound something like this. That's a little messy. He's kind of really clean with these like little micro bends. So he's going up, choking it. And I'm doing it with uh, my picking hand. And I think what's really important is if you look at my wrist, I'm going to kind of try to exaggerate the circular motion that's going on. I'm getting this uh, this eighth fret on the G string up. And see, if you see my wrist, I'm kind of circling up to get this. So this sounds bad because I'm trying to overdo it. Right, but that's kind of like the idea. It's like a circular motion type pattern thing. And we got five of those. One and two and three and four and five and. And he does that twice, okay? All right, and then after that, we've got what I think is one of the greatest like blues riffs ever that he kind of comes up with. All right, so let's break this down really slow. We were just coming from this. We're kind of faking it. We get we do the first part, the bend, then to the top, right? So the high E string, six, kind of go backwards through that scale. Nine, eight, six, eight, six. So you kind of mirror that. And then again, so we're kind of doing a lot of repetition here. We go 9, 8, 6, 8, 6, 9, 8, 6. Now this one right here is kind of a cool thing. It's like a little bit of a rake thing. So after we do this, G string 6, 7, we're, kind of, we're going to kind of rake through this chord, which is really just uh, like a B flat major chord, the bottom three strings. So you can kind of look at my fingers, I'm kind of walking through it a little bit, but my right hand, my pick is just kind of hitting one at a time, almost like a slow strum, not like a quick, almost like a slow rake. Followed up by your pinky on the B string. Right into eight, six, two bends. All right, so again, from the rake, 9B, 8, 
two bends, just kind of like we did before. So bend up on eight, six, up, six, eight, six, seven. So two bends, B, B, eight, six, seven, and then you kind of end, you resolve on the one, right? So when I say the one, if we're doing this in the key of B flat, B flat is the one, right? Which is gonna bring us into uh, the boogie, the shuffle part of it. This is a really basic 12 bar blues thing, but kind of with some of Chuck Berry's signature energy, right? And again, this is like a song about like, like a teenage guitar prodigy who's just bursting with energy. So this part kind of mimics that. It's almost, he's like a, Chuck Berry is like a very storytelling player, right? So what all it is is super simple. It's a power chord, so 6E, e, and then your ring finger on 8A, right? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use your pinky to extend two frets on the A string. Very common blues thing. But we're gonna do it more as a burst thing. Okay, and that energy, the dynamic is what really makes it. So we're gonna have uh, 12 bar blues, we have three root notes. Here, here, and here. The one, four, and five for the major scale. One, two, three, four, five. So we have four bars of one. One, and two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and seven, and eight. So if we have four bars, Right? And each bar is gonna be one and two and three and four and we're gonna do that four times. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Down a string, do the same thing. So I'm rooting on the A string. Then back up to the one for more for two more bars. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. We're gonna go one bar of the five chord. One, two, three, four, five. One and two and three and four and one bar of four. One and two and three and four and and then two more bars of one to finish the twelve bar sequence. One and two and three. And then again, right? Starts. So the dynamic is really important, right? We're kind of and this is palm muted again. Uh, again, just got my palm on the bridge. If you do it just clean, like sustained. It's gonna sound too uh, muddy with the lead thing on there. Now, if you're just doing it by yourself, you can sustain it, whatever. Uh, but usually this is kind of palm muted a little bit. And again, that Chuck Berry burst, that kind of energy, that personality that he's adding to it, he's kind of inflecting dynamically certain notes, like the one and two and three and four. And one. kind of easing off the palm, you just kind of get a little more volume, a little more sustain. So really, that's kind of, you can do that to taste, depending on, like, if you're playing it with a band, if you're playing it solo, and uh, I think that's kind of, like, a really important distinction to make, especially when it comes to the chorus, the... That part right there. Now there's a lot of space, and this is kind of common in like a lot of different blues songs. If you're in the context of a band, there might be space while they're kind of like a call and response thing to, uh, to the lyrics, like go, John, go, go, right? So we're kind of doing that, but if you're playing it solo guitar and you're not singing along with it, you might want to do something there. So basically, first of all, we're just gonna talk about how to play this chorus lick thing. Okay, all I'm doing is I'm sliding like a double stop, middle finger to 10, G, pointer finger to 9, B. And I'm sliding one, two, three, four times on the fifth time, I'm bringing that ring finger down to double stop on the 11th fret of the B string. Just kind of like we did at the beginning, but we're just gonna do it on here. One, two, three, four, five, and then there'd be the lyric. But if you don't want to sing along with it or whatever, I think a great thing to do, this isn't on the tab, but this is something you can incorporate in anything else, is to add the melody or harmonize the melody of what's singing within the piece. So something like this. So I'm kind of adding the go, Johnny, go, go, right there. And that's just on the G string. 
ten, eight, seven, ten, ten, back into the chords, ten. And then the Johnny B. Good part would be uh, like eight G to seven G up a string. So this is a great way to kind of like incorporate some of the scales and the like licks and stuff like that and to kind of match them melodically with maybe the vocals that are going on just to kind of keep something going on uh, guitar busy wise. Now if you are playing with the singer you might not want to do that because you could be stepping on what they're trying to do but it's always good to have options so you're not sitting around like and then you're just kind of waiting for the next. That's almost kind of too much space, I think, if you're playing just like a solo guitar thing. So always be wary that no matter where you are, somewhere around where your position is, the melody or like a harmony of the melody exists. It's a great trick for your ears to try to kind of find something like that. So when it comes to the solo, a lot of it is just pentatonic stuff and you just want to be in the position of B flat, right? And you can use like, like a minor pentatonic thing if you want. But basically what he's doing a lot is doing the same thing in the intro, but just kind of altering it a little bit. Kind of like a... Which is just the same thing at the intro. And then just kind of like a little pentatonic backwards thing. So really just kind of experiment with that until you kind of find the sound you're looking for. So anyways, definitely subscribe to the channel. Click on the link to get the tab to kind of see it, but also to challenge yourself to try to see how far you can get without the tab. And uh, really, before you know it, think about the techniques that Chuck Berry uses to try to get it to sound like it, because a lot of times that's really overlooked. Like if you're like reading off a tab or something and learning a song, you just kind of play the notes and you learn how to play the notes. But that's really only like half the battle to really kind of understand different players' tendencies and to kind of get a certain sound. You want to be thoughtful about not just playing the notes, but how you're playing the notes and the different techniques and how your wrist is positioned in. If you're getting downstrokes or slides or upstrokes, all that stuff uh, ends up adding up and makes a big difference. So definitely if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.